Now, in case you weren't paying attention, listen close. This is how it all happened. The newly fed Diopolis, known to you as Piotr, broke out of our cellar and hunted us for sport. Due to drinking two of his fellow vampires, he had gained immensely more potent vitae and had gone from a 12th generation rube to a humongous, thick, sickoid monster of the 10th generation. So stupendous he became, he managed to break through the cellar door we spent half of Marcus's weight in gold on. The one that could take a force of 2,475 Minas. Which would be about 825 from that kilograms measurement. And definitely not 18,000 in your American caveman measurements door. Please remember my presence. <laughs> well, anyway. Next thing we know, he's somewhere in the house, invisible, and Marcus decides to jump out the window, which has him sprained both his legs, and then they're also shot with a gun, unrelated. Our plan was to head for the carport roof, but then I was dragged out, the very same window Marcus had opened, and I landed on the stony barrow by the house. I was so exhausted by that, I decided to go to sleep. When I came to, I saw Marcus had not dragged me down the road following our secret safe passage. In turn, my son-in-law then expertly tries to lure the vampire out onto our front lawn. But he does not fall for it, and that lands Marcus in especially hot water. Fortunately, that disgusting fucking brain did not use his full strength to kill my son. I think he wasn't trying to kill any one of us, in truth. So he could line us up in a sick, vampiric, all-you-can-eat buffet. Worse still, I suspect he may have followed a foolhardy urge to embrace us all and bury us in a mass grave. We may have all been damned this day, had it not been for what happened next. My son Dor's ingenuity struck him in more ways than one, as our front yard had been converted with custom, sensitive, anti-freak minds for a situation much like this one. And with a well play shot by my beautiful, wonderful, amazing, and fantastic prodigy of a grandson, the Nosferatu known as Piotr was swiftly knocked into torpor. Not long after, day came to us. And Piotr's sentence was ultimately rendered by sunlight. Later today, I'm going to gather the leftovers of his conflagration. I'm planning on compressing it into a diamond to show that even the ugly of us can be made magnificent. Perhaps I'll attach it to a ring and give Marcus a spectacular wedding band. But, uh, yeah, before that we were arrested. And I don't talk to cops. Alright. Good day, sir. My name is Detective Sergeant Guy Chapman. I'll be interviewing you today. Are you, uh, feeling comfortable? Your jaw situation any better? Yes! Uh, yes! A bit! <laughs> you know, how about I make us some coffee? I'll be right back. You do that, Detective. You best do that. If there's one thing we know for a fact as hunters, it's that the vampire is everywhere. Society is led blindly by the deeply ingrained wiles of these creatures, and especially that of their most guileful sect, the Camarilla. They infiltrate every facet of human life. Industry, government, all forms of organization, our very infrastructure, even family. You can never be sure where their ears might be. And so you must always be primed to plug them. Let me set the scene. I sit inside the Norfolk Constabulary in the township of Wales next to the sea. I am just about to be interviewed. My goals are to see if the police here have been compromised by the Camarilla, to not give anything away that could be seen by them as a masquerade breach, and, of course, not be arrested. Uh, this will be harder than you might expect. Because I'm going in with a handicap. Right. Here you go. Kevin, was it? 
You can call me the great and mighty Kevin if you'd like. All my friends do. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, and uh, thank you. I do love my Kevin. Wow, great and mighty Kevin. That sounds fantastic. Where'd you get that title? Oh, it's a long story uh, from my accounting days. Kind of stuck as an in-joke, and it makes me feel pretty great and mighty in the day-to-day. -day. Uh, you don't have to use it. It was just a funny little joke. <laughs> Well, I always respect titles, ye great and mighty one. You better believe I'll be using it. Well, thank you, Detective Sergeant. <laughs> oh, man, we're going to have a time of it today, I'm sure. But, 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 I must inform you that we're recording this. Camera's up in the corner there. There's also these microphones picking up our voices. So, if you want to speak to us, I'd ask you to speak loudly and clearly so the microphones can pick you up the best they can. All right. That should not be an issue. Very good, very good. Thank you. I already knew the camera and the microphone were not working. In preparation for the inevitability of an arrest, I make it a habit of sneaking into the local constabularies round Warham, and I sabotage their equipment. The constabulary is incredibly small, with only a scant few officers working there at any given time, and their interrogation cells are as virgin as their wit. Breaking into a small police station is about the easiest thing you can do. Whilst often on the lookout for break-ins, they never expect their own quarters broken into. The hubris of the watchmen to think themselves unwatched. They always fall for the officer Nesto trick. So, it's just the two of us otherwise. Right now it's 14.34pm. If you look at the watch, could you confirm? Oh, oh yeah, 14.34. It is indeed the number on your timepiece. <laughs> All right, yep, very good. So, today is the 1st of December 2006 at Norfolk Constabulary in Wells Next the Sea. Can you agree with all that? Oh, yes, happily confirmed. I love Wales next to sea. I might go ride the miniature steam train later while I'm here. It happens to be open this time of year. <laughs> oh, that right? A big adventure on the world's smallest public railway. How could I pass it up? Oh, oh yeah, true. Rode on it with the kids last summer. They adored it. It passes through some drop-dead gorgeous vistas. You really get to see Norfolk from another angle, you know? Oh, for sure. Did you know there's a ghost platform along the track? Extremely frightening. Oh, the abandoned one. Yeah, yeah. There's also that Iron Fork camp. Hmm, that one's in Warham, right? Actually, that camp's pretty close to where you were today, isn't it? Oh, yes, the camp is quite close to my dear friend's home. Uh, we don't go there much. It's quite the dreary spot. Smells of death. Uh, the Iron Age Fort, that is. Death? A corpse was found there a few years ago. Some poor sod who had been missing since the 90s. Looked like he'd been lying there for a while and no one picked up on it. Goodness. Was it any one of you who found it? No, it was my friend's neighbor, Caracas. He found it while he was doing his daily routine of digging ditches into places that do not need ditches. That's... very interesting. But perhaps we should get on with the actual interview. What do you say? Oh, sorry, sorry. Absolutely. I wouldn't want to waste any more of your time than this. No, 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 no. It's all right. You're all right, Kevin. That's totally fine. I'll just need to go through some more formalities with you before we can begin. A formal lad, I love it! Oh, not for long. It's pub time after this. <laughs> <laughs> I love drinking! <laughs> An activity I do. I don't know if you know this, but the police in these lands are quite unlike what you see in the mainstream stories of the modern age. They seek to build a different rapport, following the peace method of interrogation. With this, they primarily wish to disarm their suspect by making them as agreeable and comfortable as they can be, as those embraced in comfort after a stressful situation are far more likely to tell the truth. Knowing this, I intentionally sink into a casual and comfortable role, exactly where the officer wants me, so they would be more likely to believe I'm being honest. This is an advanced deception technique I invented. A technique I refer to as lying. 
So, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand what I've just said? Clear as crystal. Could you put it in your own words? But I shouldn't say anything weird. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've already failed that part. At that moment, I feared my cover was blown. I had to fight my way out. I prepared my hidden poison blade. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what, what, a, what a relief. <laughs> All right, so that's your right to silence. Just need to have that put out. So, could I ask for your full name for the purpose of the interview? My name is Kevin Wetsworth. Do you have a middle name? Malcolm. Like Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> yes, everyone makes that joke, I can assure you. I'm not as wild and wacky as Malcolm in the middle. And I am instead a normal man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean to slap a dead horse. My name's Guy, so well, I understand it when people are jokers about your name. Oh, that's completely understandable, my guy. Oi, now. <laughs> you sure you aren't as wild and wacky as you are on TV? Well, maybe a tad, maybe, maybe just a little. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, well. Television. Could I get your birthday as well, Malcolm? Oh, sorry. Kevin? Oh, that's all right. The worms will get us all one day. The what? It's October 31st, 1979. My birthday, I mean. Oh, that's pretty fun. That's All Hallows' Eve. Yes, it's also National Magic Day! The day Houdini died. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. So, a few more questions. First off, what's your address? You can go through it all. The officer went through a few more questions. Nothing noteworthy. Until eventually, the actual interview began. So, what happened this morning, in your reckoning? Oh, do you want me to go through the entire morning? Yeah. Anything you think might be relevant. All right. So I've been up all night. I haven't caught any sleep yet. You might call me something of a night owl. <laughs> uh, <yes. clears throat> I was meeting up with some old friends. We haven't met in a good while. Years and years as I've been out traveling. So I was driven to the house a few days prior, we had a good time, and then, well... It's all right. Take your time. This is where it all begins. There are already several missing persons reports in and around the area of the tunnel entrance. Since that was where I first found them, and since Sabat members are usually reported as missing people themselves, I wanted to use this to my advantage. However, I already know the tunnels are a particular target of Camarilla interest, and also that the Anarchs have declared the area under their domain. Assuming the police are compromised, any mention of the tunnels will lead to suspicion. But I might be able to use it to throw off the scent. So, it was early in the morning, a few days ago. Uh, we took a fun little nightly road trip to an area just between Walsingham, Binham and Hindringham, uh, right along Wells Road. We went there because, well, <laughs> I'm kind of big into cold cases, and uh, I know there's been some missing persons reports in that particular area, so we just kind of went there. I know it's irresponsible. It's all right. Uh, but it was just such an enticing prospect. It's all right. I absolutely understand. You're just out for some excitement. You're not the only ones, let me tell you. Well, I'll be honest, it does get worse. I kind of... Uh... Yes? Well... I tried to entice the officer to presenting me with a leading question. If he is a Camarilla agent, he will know about the tunnel situation to some degree. What degree, I'm not sure. But he will want to take any possible masquerade breach into account. If he takes the bait, I will be made more certain. Take your time. I can understand if it's hard to talk about. <sighs> Mm. 
<sighs> Take it on. <sighs> mm. Look, I'm not sure how you're feeling. If you feel self-conscious about it, that's fine. We all make mistakes. Mm. Is he biting? Yes. It was a... Well, yeah, quite a gaff on our part, I'd say. Come now, just a little more. It was all related to the missing persons report, I take it. Almost. I think so. You think so? Did you... Find anyone, or...? Found anyone? What does he mean? Does he imply that he thinks the missing people might just be lost? Or is he implying we might have found someone else there? He thinks the former, I might be safe. If not... Hmm... How will he respond? Well... Yes. We did. And that was the same people who you invited home a few days ago. Whoa! What the fuck? What kind of question is that? That we invited home? That is far too specific to be a coincidence. And that's when I realized my sons, my son-in-law, my grandson, they were all interviewed before me. Which, of course, was the intention, but... But... They were fucking up on their testimonies! I cannot believe it. After everything I've taught them, invited home? Why would he say that? Who said that? Oh! Wait. Of course. Son-in-law? It must have been my son-in-law who said that. Oh, his anti-cop training was never concluded. He never got past the Grand Theft Police Car Seminar. Of course. He wanted to present this as having been a good-natured affair on our part. The fool. Fool. I must be incredibly careful. But I need to harmonize these different testimonies. Yes, we took pity on them. Pity, you say? Of course. They... I'm sorry, the missing people. We... Uh, shall I say... I recognize some of them. Or at least one of them. From the missing persons posters. Noted. Just a moment before we continue. I braced myself for combat. For the SWAT teams to come pouring in. For fists and bullets to fly. But instead, <clears throat> I was faced with a more powerful and evil foe. Here. Paperwork. This is an index of many missing persons in the local area. Could you flip through? Tell us if you recognize any of these people. My suspicions bright and aroused like an ornery male peacock. I flipped through the names. Most were passingly familiar to me. Ready Hunter with their salt and his preparation as even more important than firepower. However, these ones, I'd expect, were just victims of the Sabbat. No faces I recalled seeing elsewhere. I struggled with myself. Should I mention a name at random? No. Foolish. It could be a trap to invalidate my testimony. To boot, I didn't recognize all of them. Were some of the others vampires? I struggled. I struggled and struggled. Till by pure chance. You found someone? I came across a familiarly unfamiliar face. Pyotor. Yes. Let me take a gander. Oh. Actually, it's Peter. Peter Piotrowski. His face was warped, handsome beyond recognition. Poor fellow. No wonder you were such a prick. Was he there that night? Yes. Though he had a bandana on for the most part. I recognize the hair, the eyes, the name. Yes. Yes, he was there that night. 
And with no body to disprove my story, that should be alibi enough for any Camarilla constabularies. Interesting. So you found this man, Peter Piotrowski, and a few others that you do not recognize. Would that be accurate? Yes. They had formed into a group and approached us in the thicket. They said they'd just managed to escape some strange captors, begged us for help. They didn't go into much detail, but how could we refuse? Little did we know, they weren't quite what they seemed. Hmm. That sounds pretty incredible. Huh. You're telling me. Did he buy it? Had I already contradicted the family story? And how many were they? Four. Right. Okay, so just to get this straight, you found four people lost in the woods. You thought you recognised them, or at least one of them, from missing persons reports, and you brought them back to your place. Is that all correct so far? An accurate report, Detective Sergeant. Uh, perhaps you should consider a career in court stenography. <laughs> Maybe when my legs give in, I'll consider it. I'll smash them in with a pipe wrench if you continue to nail me like this. Fuck. What other testimonies have the family given? All right. So, let me have a think about this, because I have a couple of questions. Um... Damnation. Silent Law's report was in all likelihood the most divergent one. The rest, without doubt, told him that bringing them back was an involuntary affair. Mm, he is too nice. He agreeing with his testimony like this. It isn't going to be enough. Perhaps I'm going too wild with the story. The lack of collaboration could undo me here. It's three against two. There is a clear divergence that cannot be reconciled. Unless... All right, so, first off, what happened on the way back to the house? Well, wait, there is an out here. Marcus! Marcus, I put my faith in you, son! Into your hands I commit my spirit! I didn't interact with them much, but I know they were a bit weird towards two of us from the beginning. Uh, the father, Dor, and his son, if you know them. Yep, sure. I didn't catch on to it very early, but I think those thugs might have been threatening them from the onset. He, Dor, was the one driving, you see. The rest of us didn't really think about it, or as far as I know, at least. And drive like it was the wacky races, off the road, into the bushes and everything. It was crazy! With this, we can harmonize the accounts. As long as Marcus did this correctly... Hmm... All right. So, what happened when you got home? Yes! He bought it! Marcus, beautiful boy! He knows his brother, he knows his nephew, and of course he knows his fiance! Marcus has reconciled this very testimony in much the same way as his father. I'm not the only one in this. We will harmonize these accounts together! Sorry, when we got home? Yes. That's when it all went to hell, of course. This is the harder part. There are many specifics in this part of the story. I realized I was traipsing into a minefield, much like the one on our front lawn. I needed to be specific, but not specific enough to contradict the other's testimonies. Marcus might be brash, but the lad is a genius. No doubt he'd gone for an approach not dissimilar to my own. Dor, on the other hand, he's precise, calculating, but with the creativity of a sea cucumber. If anyone gave exact information, it would be him. My darling son-in-law has no doubt continued to be his typical, friendly and accommodating self, for better or worse. And boy, 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 I love my grandson. I'm sorry? Humana, humana, Brian Cradston. Oh, oh, yes, Malcolm in the middle. Sorry, let's s stay on topic, though. You invited the missing people into your house. Then what happened? 
My presumptions arrayed, I focused on one thing. If this officer was with the Camarilla, he would already know the survivors were vampires. If that were the case, he'd be looking for the slightest hint that we were aware of that, which would essentially mark us for death. Sorry, things went very fast. At first we were socializing. They had come in from the cold. I was worried sick about them. It seemed like they had the most incredible story. And eventually that story proved too good to be true. They had guns. They began threatening us. What kind of guns? I'm not much of a hunter. I couldn't say the exact kind. A clear lie, by the way. I am actually the best hunter, probably in the world. <laughs> anyway. I believe it was a shotgun. It could have been a rifle. I also think I saw some pistols. I see, I see. And was there anything else? By God, yes. They held us at gunpoint, handed us mines, explosives, and forced us to plant them in our front lawn. To me, bringing the mine view into things was a no-brainer. If anyone mentioned anything, it'd be that. I just had to bring the narrative around in a way that deflected blame. And where were these explosives found? On the property? The property? What do you mean? Well, look, I need you to be honest. You know, I need the clearest account possible. And I need to know, where were the explosives from? Were they owned by your friends? No, no! Good heavens, no! How could you even say that? Kevin, listen. My family, my good friends, who are like family, that is, and, and I, get fucking held at gunpoint, punch kicked and forced into traumatizing labor, including my friend's very small son, who I call my grandson even though I'm 47 years old. You ask if the mines were ours? My apologies, Kevin. I understand your experience was traumatic. You're right. I'm feeling loads of trauma. I'm a goddamn traumaniac, but not as manic as those fuckers. Sorry? The fuckers. Fuckers. Hell's fuckers! Have you heard of them? Oh, oh, of course. This was the beginning of my counterattack. As you're no doubt aware, our dearest Bruja and Tribu Shitbeard was a member of the Fuckers from Hell, also known as the Pale's Fuckers. His jacket claimed this, at least, and that's all that matters. That county spanning biker brigade is a known Sabbat affiliate. They have a pension for embracing bikers, truckers, and other hard men of the road. They also are known for their violent encounters with Anarch, Camarilla, and law enforcement alike. Were they involved in the incident? Right, so... One of them made mention of that. They said to me, Listen up, you goddamn swamp shrew! Dig the ditch, and if you're lucky, hell's fuckers won't put you in it! In that same accent? That's right, an American accent. Brrrrs and all. And then he spat on the ground like some kind of chimpanzee. And you say the mines weren't yours, but theirs? Yes, of course, of course! I refuse to believe even Dor would have admitted to us owning the mines. Not even son in laws that accommodating. Not even boy is that naive! I am doubling down on this. I see. So, just to clear this up, this is all just some coincidence. The missing persons you brought home were affiliated with the Hell's Fuckers gang, and they happened to ride home with a former EOD specialist, bringing their own minds. Damn you! Prepare to die! I wanted to scream that as loud as I could when he said that. The story was beginning to crumble. Dor came here dressed in his EOD suit. He must have admitted to owning it. He must have told them of his old fucking mining days, God damn it! Because what you're telling me is that these people showed up, including at least one missing person, and then, with mines they supplied themselves, they had you, and especially your friend, 
a professional in the uh, field, they had him dig up a minefield in your own front lawn. Could you confirm that as correct in your assessment? Well, uh, a liar would get indignant. If I were telling the truth, I'd get angry. Look here, Stakehead! Stakehead? I can't control what the truth is! Uh, I understand that, I'm sure it sounds ridiculous to you, but so did walruses until we had photos of them! For fuck's sake, man! Tusks on a manatee! I am listening, sir. I am. I should hope you are! Because if you don't believe me, I'll invoke my right to attorney! Which you're free to do. However... However, nothing! The facts are clear! They had a whole stash of weapons nearby! A fucking stash! It wasn't just mines! Once they found out about Dor's background, they decided to store their arms there! It wasn't a coincidence! It was some kind of sick, spontaneous whimsy on their part! I waited for the response. A sharp repudiation. A resignation that a lawyer was necessary. Or even becoming officially arrested. And yet... Oh. Oh. I see. That's rather disconcerting. Let me write that up. He seemed to accept it. Could it be a tactic? Could he have accepted any story, no matter how ridiculous? No. I could see it in his eyes. His hands sweaty, clammy, his eyes glazing over in a sense of internal calculation. He wasn't just entertaining me. He was genuinely concerned. Which could only mean one thing. I'll make sure that gets to the relevant authorities. This wasn't any normal cop. He was certainly a Camarilla agent. <sighs> I'm sorry you had to go through that. Within his skull, I could already hear the gears turning. Does he think this is a new stage in the Sabbat Crusade? Perhaps he's thinking we're good. If the Sabbat Armory had moved in so close, he'd need to alert his masters. <sighs> All right. Uh, apologies for my temper flaring. <clears throat> what? Oh, uh, it's uh, quite all right. Tense situation. Weird situation. It really is weird. Why commandeer a random house? I guess it's like they say. You never expect the level of criminality that goes entirely unaccounted for outside of cities. But... Uh, it's fine. Oh well, not really, but... Was there anything else? Did you happen to overhear anything? Oh! Oh yes, 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 there is something! That man, the one with the drawl! The American? Yes, him. I heard him mention there was a dispute with some rival gang. Like a, an, an anarchist gang? That should hit the spot. Uh, hmm. Did they say anything about that gang? They would most likely be luring them to our house. Hence, you know, the minefield. And we just did it, of course, hoping we'd be spared. But then... Just before dawn, more bikers showed up and they just drove off with them. After that, the alarm finally went off and called the police. But, uh, I don't know. Perhaps they were expecting that. Don't worry about that, sir. We'll take it from here. Thank goodness. That's a load off my shoulders. I'm sure. Just a few more questions, if you don't mind. Go right ahead! I love talking to cops! <laughs> right, so... We wanted to ask about the car and the carport. The car? Yes. Do you know what happened to it? Uh, I do not. Okay, that's fine. Do you know anything about the pit in front of the car at the carport? What? Pit? Who's been digging pits without me? It must have been Piotr's doing somehow. Or was Cracker skulking around the property again? Could you tell me what happened to the car? I've not seen or heard anything. Well, it looks like it had somehow been driven into the carpool entrance, the one into the house, that is. But it's flipped horizontally with the uh, 
car door leading into the house, if you can visualise it. What the fuck? Uh, yeah. It almost looks like it's been thrown or something. What? Yeah, it's weird. And then there's that pit, which is exactly outside the car. Do you know if any of you dug that? Um... What the fuck is this now? Like it's been thrown or something? I assume Pyotr threw my son-in-law's runabout. That would be a given to anyone even vaguely familiar with vampire society. Why would he give me this? Why would he tell me it looks like it was thrown? Is he being coy? Does he already know I'm in the know? Or did someone else say it? It can't be that one of the others actually said that it was thrown, or that it looks like it was thrown. Or could they? Is he checking for masquerade breaches? Or does he just say it like that because he genuinely thinks it looks like it was thrown? Is he genuinely looking for answers? Why would he say it like that if he was? Why would he say it like that if he wasn't? That would be a dead giveaway! Is he not Camarilla after all? Oh, what the fuck? I'm second-guessing myself. I'm not sure if any one of us dug that pit. Uh, I honestly have no clue. This could have happened whilst I was burying mines. Or it could have happened when I was uh, unconscious. Could you tell me a bit about how that happened? This should be easier. There cannot be many contradictions in our testimonies. And after this, I'm out. It's up to everyone else past this point. I can count on Marcus saying that he didn't jump out the window. And the other three certainly would know this. Sure, so... The red-headed one, Marcus. He was let go out the window from the second floor. When he landed, he sprained both his legs. Absolutely horrid. I hate gravity. Oh, and then they shot his legs with a gun, because that was only a natural part of their M.O. as fuckers. That's awful. Yes. Uh, then, of course, I was next. I was let go, and I fell onto the rocky barrow next to a house, and that's how I got this brand new Campbell jawline. Cool, I love Evil Dead. He admits it! He loves the Evil Dead! The Evil Dead Vampire! It's just a movie film. Uh, yeah, I love a movie. Yeah, you know, I absolutely agree. But, sorry, I didn't mean to derail the conversation. <laughs> so, anyway, Marcus was shot in the legs. How were you dragged out the window? Did anyone in particular drag you? Yeah, well, he, uh, wait. Dragged? Who said dragged? I did not say I was dragged out. Sorry, um, uh, fuck. By dragged out, does he mean dragged to the window and thrown out? Or does he mean grabbed by a hand and dragged outside? Oh god, this is too specific to be a coincidence. Who? Who said I was dragged out the window? Dor would be more simple in his approach. Marcus would not be that specific. Dear and son-in-law knows not to mention something like that. Boy. Boy, no! Boy chose the wrong word! Yeah, so it was one of the bikers, not sure which. I just kind of fell out and landed down on a stone, so... Absolutely. But how did you exit the window? Oh, what the fuck is this? This is some serious probing. What should I say? If I even approach the truth, that would sound ridiculous enough to be seen as a serious indictment towards my legitimacy. At worst, it could be seen as a masquerade breach. Boy's innocent blunder might be enough to warrant our destruction. Damn my beautiful, sweet, and precious, perfect grandchild! Damn him! Ah, uh, right. So, this was quite the horrifying moment. I'm not going to lie. It went by very fast, but... As Marcus was thrown out the window, he actually grabbed onto me midair, and... But he's a big lad, and so, uh... I tried to stop his fall, gripping at the windowsill. But when the rest of those thugs lifted my legs and pushed me out... Uh, we both fell, and I smashed my jaw in. All right. Was that enough? So, just to clear this up, you were upstairs at this stage. Marcus was thrown out the window by the thugs. 
and then you, approaching the window and standing by it, was grabbed by Marcus. You were dragged out by him and fell down too, with the thugs helping by destabilising you. Could you confirm? Shit. Did anyone else bring up the time it took between Marcus falling and me falling? Did anyone say it took a few minutes before I too was thrown out? If anyone has, it's a contradiction clear as day. Damn it. Fuck. I cannot correct this. Could you? Yes, that is correct. All right. And just to clarify, how many of the thugs helped force you out the window? I don't know. And do you know what happened immediately after that at all? I do not. Okay. Let me write this up real quick. What? Why? Why isn't he bringing up the time? He could have nailed me right there. If he asked how much time it took between us falling and he of the sort, a clear contradiction would immediately become apparent. That's what he wants, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> Marcus! 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 He said the same exact thing I did! He covered it up just like I did! He did it! He strengthened our testimony yet again! He reinforced it with alloys as strong as his massive shoulders and flowing radiant hair! Oh, I love that boy! You seem like you're in a good mood. What? Oh, no! <laughs> Something on your mind, Gav? Oh, no, I was just thinking of how thankful I am that everyone survived. You know, after I was knocked out, the last thought I had was of inextricable horror. But also a pure, unflinching trust. It was like a force. I knew the others would make it. I knew they would get us out of that mess, even without me. And, and they did. Wow. I'm sure you helped in your own little way. So, could you tell me what happened in the cellar? Fuck! They searched the house! I dearly hoped they wouldn't have. What do I do here? This is the most damning part yet. What have the others said here? There are two corpses down there. It's covered in blood. There are cameras and cages. It looks like a literal murder dungeon. Marcus does, at the very least, not record anything for posterity. But... I... The cellar? I wasn't aware they went down there. Okay... So, you didn't see or hear anything from down there? I don't think so, no. You didn't watch the live feed on the computer? <laughs> the live feed? You mean with the camera they have down there? So you know there is a camera down there? Yes, it's Marcus's... Uh... Yes? Fun dungeon. Could you elaborate? Do I have to? I'm sorry, there is a reason why we need you to elaborate on this. Look, this is too much for me. It is... Fucked up sex seller, okay? He thinks I don't know about it. I know about it, and I hate it. It makes me want to vomit and die. It's this thing he and his partner got started up, and, you know, that's their prerogative. I support their relationship totally, but... The things I've seen down there... What kind of things? Rodeo cowboys. What? Several clowns. I... Small plastic army men! By God! If those thugs found it, I can't believe what their reaction was. Okay. Sorry, uh, writing that, uh, down... Could you explain what else exactly is down there? Um, well... Some specialty about cages, a sign that says something about not screaming. I think there's a horsewhip serving double duty sometimes, but most of his stash is up in their room. You know. His figures. Right. The truest curse of being a father is simply knowing too much. 
Like how much he spent on those miniatures, goodness! You should steal them next time. Do you know if the cages were used for anything else? Not as far as I know, no. Right. Do you know two persons by the name of Richard Porter and Dave McGlow? I do not! Oh, hold on. Richard Porter and Dave McGlow. These must be the names of Shitbeard and Ape Boy. They must have found their real identities. And so soon, missing people for certain. Here's my chance. Actually, I think I do. Or one of them, at least. And what's your relation to them? Didn't that Dave McClough guy disappear a few months ago? I think I read about it in a missing persons report. Uh, why? Are they connected to the case? They were found in the cellar. What? Really? Were they part of the gang? Are they arrested? We found them dead. What? What? Like, they were killed? How? We're still looking into it. But, it looks like they died a time ago. More than five years ago in the case of Richard Porter. Dave McGlough is badly mutilated. He was hard to ID. What? They just put the corpses of some dead people down there? We do not know the situation. I think I made it. Shipbeard had the Hell's Fuckers logo emblazoned on his jacket. If they found the corpses, then they found the jacket. We will not take that as a coincidence. That corpse has not been lying there for five plus years, and the clothes he's wrapped up in are probably fresher than the corpse itself. When a vampire faces final death, their body rapidly degenerates to the state their corpse would have been at had they died the day of their embrace. To someone naive, Shitbeard looks like he's been dead for a long, long time. But his clothes, they're brand new in comparison. In addition, the blood, it will still be fresh. This will look like a setup. Why would we dig down mines in our own front lawn, so illegal firearms, and dress up corpses in our cellar? No matter how you cut it, there was a struggle in our home and it looks the part. They found us badly hurt, abused. We are far beyond innocent in the world of the mortal. And be he Camarilla. <laughs> Why, you'd already know what the corpses were. It would look exactly like it was infighting between support members. We should be in the clear. All righty. So, I have a few more questions, then we will conclude for today. You good with that? We did it! Certainly. Do you know how the mines were detonated? I do not. Right. Do you know where the thugs disappeared? I truly have no clue. Right. Could you describe the character of each of the thugs? You can start off with whichever one you like. Oh, sure. Well, I remember one being quite skinny, black as stripy. We continued on with the interview for a brief moment longer, but it wasn't long until I had made it unscathed through the rest of the questions. In retrospect, it was obvious to keep himself anonymous. And then there was this fucking weirdo with a wizard hat. Can you believe it? Wearing a wizard hat. <laughs> and you've not even declared registered so Right, so, in conclusion, let me just clarify your story. You picked up a group of individuals in seeming duress. They turned out to be individuals with violent intent that forced the family to conduct dangerous activities, such as burying mines under the threat of death. You were assaulted in the process, and the individuals are still on free foot. You were not aware of the situation with the corpses, the car, the pit, nor the time of the mines detonating or the departure of the suspects. Would you confirm this as a fair summation? Yes. Very good. So, this interview is now concluded at the time of... 15.40 on the 1st of December, 2006. If you look, can you confirm that for the recording? If the clock speaks true, then so it is!
please just say yes or no. Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you very much for your time. You're now free to go. Thank you very much, Detective. Sorry, what was that? Detective, I have had a time of it, just as you said. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Guff. Glad to hear it. And I pray that jaw of yours heals up right quick. Oh, I'm sure it will. Could have gone much worse, that. Must have been your... Guardian Angel or something. Well, if you believe in that kind of thing. Uh, I'm a bit of a sceptic, personally. Oh, really? Yes. I definitely don't believe in Bigfoot. I like ghosts and supernatural stuff and all that, but I don't know. How would that stuff even work? I feel like science would have caught on to there being just this whole other spectrum of matter and energy just kind of floating around old forests and manors by now. <laughs> Bingo bongo. Right, yeah, or in tunnels or whatever. Uh, you know. Tunnels? Oh, shit, but look at the time, it's off to the pub. No fucking way. I've got to go myself, it's the weekend soon. No one has told him of the tunnels. I know no one has told him of the tunnels, right? Does your great and mighty one need escorting out? He is an agent. There's no doubt about it now. He knew about them all along. He screwed up. No, that won't be necessary. Oh, that's good. Ah, oh, such a scatterbrain. I've got one final question, actually, but quite unrelated. Uh, go right ahead. Do you know a Caitlin Wetsworth? Yes, M my mother. Your sister. Fuck! She's reported you as missing multiple times. But you've been reported as accounted for on our end. You even said that you were out travelling, weren't you? But she's kept up with the reports. Maybe you should look into that. Damnation! Letting a loose end fall like that so close to the end. I... I made a mistake. No. Big D doesn't make mistakes. Big D can't be defeated. Not by some low-down country detective. Not by all the vampires in the world. Ah, ah detective. Uh, yeah? It's been a while, hasn't it? Since last you had your fill. Ah. Uh. Uh <laughs> Have no fear, detective. You've passed. Passed? You followed the first tradition of our father. The regent of Great Yarmouth congratulates you. Come to the house for your next assignment. You are expecting. What? <laughs> oh, and don't be so gauche as to mention this to the others. It simply won't do. But, but, what, what should my report say? Report nothing out of the ordinary. Ensure this is buried as quickly and quietly as possible. I will show myself. Excellent work. Y yes, Master. Thank you, Master. And then I strutted out in the most immodest way I possibly could to shed any doubt that I was mortal for that poor little detective. And so, our police adventure had come to a close, and we were not indicted, neither by the law, nor by the Camarilla. That was a roller coaster of emotion, the likes of which I have not felt since I last rode an actual roller coaster. You speak words, and the words are truth, Kevin. You should have murked that guy, though. Murked? Uh, rubbed out. Made past tense? How forward? You should have killed him! Now that, obviously, I had considered. But you know how cops get. You ice one corrupt police chief, all of a sudden, oh, you have to leave the country now. Oh. Which country did this happen? That's not the point, and Bangladesh. I have just one question. Just one? I have many. But I'm focusing on the cop thing. You never explained why you used my name during the interrogation. Oh, I just needed an unused identity in the area. I already had your license, so I felt it worked. That makes zero sense. Well, it's also so I can help you sell your apartment. I'm you now. Really? 
You would do that? For sure. But what if Smurples? Well... Do not sigh. He is a burden to no one. Uh, we'll take him in. A uh, boy has always wanted a familiar of sorts. An excellent reward for capping Pewter. Oh, has he taken care of a pet before? He has, but he's a clever lad. I'm sure he'll manage. I'll write a list of his every want and need. You will not have to think about anything. Will everyone else be nice to him, though? I don't want to leave him in the hands of a lone child with gun interests. Uh, I'll be frank, Kevin. I, I do not like cats. That confirms it. You are a demon, just as I figured. But, just for you, I will be injecting toxoplasmosis into my brainstem later today to ensure I do not kick him into a chimney. Good. Because if you so much as pull his tail, I will enter your house and explode. Oh, then take days to rinse up. A follow-up question, though. Isn't using my name in this manner incredibly fucking irrational? Won't it give up your cover? <laughs> oh, Kevin. You might be able to fool your packmates, but me? You weren't known as Kevin nor Kevin Wetsworth when you were with the Camarilla, were you? Uh, how would you know this? I know more of your old master than you know yourself. I know that after death, you were stripped of your old name, burned away, and given a new one. An alias defined by the regent herself to meld you into a new existence. As far as the Camarilla is concerned, you have no name past the one they gave you. Kevin Wetworth is a dead memory. But that is a corpse you never buried. You did not fully let go of your old name, as we know, and you readopted it as soon as you gained standing within the Sabbat. Isn't that right? No, I am not telling you my shitty Camarilla roleplay name. You need to! It is integral to our survival! No. Well, you can either tell me that, or you can tell me what your hell's fuckers packmates called you before you gained enough respect to be called Kevin. You had a name like Ape Boy or Shitbeard too, didn't you? You present me with a two-pronged road. One leads to hell, and the other also leads to hell. Choose wisely. But meaty fool that you are, you do not realize that I can simply walk off the fucking road. No, give me names. It's Herbertus, isn't it? What in the weed? Oh, yeah, the cup is here now, by the way. Oh, so Herbertus? <laughs> How dare you invoke my worst name in front of fucking Dee Dee? It's literally the only name I know you, boy. How do you know it? And what the fuck are you doing here and who are you? Uh, I was invited here? I'm Detective Sergeant Guy Chapman. I'm also a ghoul of the Lady Regent. I know you from the Chantry. Or, well, haven't seen you in a few years? Maybe? I just know you were the Chantry's stockbroker or something. Accountant! I curse you! I curse you with balls full off disease! I give you lupus, not the werewolf one! You just have a wasting disease! No, now. Kevin! Do not castrate that man! He is here for his new assignment. Yeah, so, as I said, I'm a ghoul. I'm one of the two regulars at the constabulary in Wells, Texas Sea, but it's a bit far to Great Yarmouth, and the bond between me and the region hasn't been renewed in, like, eight months? I'm honestly not too picky anymore. I just want it renewed. Never trust a traitor! Not even when you create! Except for me, trust me in all circumstances! I'll be honest, Herbie. I want your blood. What? What? You want to be blood bonded? By me? Herbie. Herbie, I'm dying. Herbie. I've been experiencing painful withdrawals for a long time now, and I know you're one of hers, so it should fix me up just fine. No! No, I get sippy, not vice versa! And you, fool! You are so lost in your sauce, you don't know what you do! Nonsense! I love being bloodbound. That is the point! D, this is a wicked and vile thing you ask. It's nothing of the sort! You say this, ignorant of the horrors of the blood bond. I have killed many in the Sabbat, but this is one line I shall not cross. Herbie, please. I don't care what silly name you use. I will never ghoul you. <sighs> Herbie, I have killed six men in service to the Regent. Two of them with my teeth. I recently injected contraband heroin into my system just to simulate the thrill 
of vampire blood. It didn't even compare. You being freaky will not convince me. Oh, I, I don't think you understand. I'm, I am a freak. I will kill again. And I will literally blow up the constabulary for even the smallest possible pint of vitae. If you don't give me what I want, I might just try to take it. And if I try to take it, you'll both probably kill me. So you'll have my blood on your hands. And quite frankly, I'm so desperate for a fix, I don't really give a fuck. What? Uh, why? Why would you want to do anything of the sort when you're so close to being able to just sever it? Because I'm a hopeless addict and I like being a ghoul. It's a nice deal. I can lift my kids above my shoulders no matter how old they get. I'm going to still be doing it when they're 30, is my goal. I just need to get a better master. That's all. You have kids? That is fucking terrible. Let me spell it out for you. Blood bonds are slavery. Slavery. In this case, it's more like indentured servitude. Okay, wow. How marginally better is that? Well, I'm already a public servant, so I guess I'm just used to it. Kevin, this man is offering his services to us. His loyalty lies with the highest bidder. And you are a far better source of vitae than that hateful regent. It's... It's immoral! What? You are in the sabbat! Fuck! I have lines I do not cross that I drew with my own free will, you fucking river troll! If you don't ghoul him, he will slink back to the regent. The regent will inform the prince of our activities, and we will all be blood hunted! Or he could get over his own sick addiction? <laughs> over your dead body. Ugh, man, what a weirdo you are! If we ghoul him, which we are doing consensually, I might add, we could easily- Ugh, I don't care, it's gross! It's not that bad once you do it a couple of times. Besides, you drink blood too, don't you? You get it. I only drink blood because I have to. You inject blood like it's crack. You don't inject crack, Kevin, you fucking office worker. You can. You totally can. You've never unlived in Yarmouth. You don't understand. He's got a point. <sighs> Kevin, listen. With the detective on our side, we will have a pawn within the Norfolk police force. Do you know how valuable that is? With his help, we could creep closer to the machinations of the Camarilla than we ever could otherwise. I also make some mean jellied eels. We must have him! I do not eat! But, Kevin! Think of our future! Uh... With his help, we could further our goals. In your new redemptionist cause, you could use this to set free the worthy of your kind before the new moon comes. Wow. Are you guys like a cult or something? Probably. We are entirely secular in our orthodoxy, let me assure you. Well, neat. Come now, Kevin. I won't force you. I know it's a difficult decision. Uh, fine. Just hand me the nicest knife you have and I will stab my wrist open. Fantastic! Uh, let's use this... Uh, no, wait, this one's poison. Um, uh, oh, this one! Uh, oh, enchanted death magics. Uh, oh, I have some restored Iron Age cutlery lying around here somewhere. None of that I sinny shit. I've seen enough Boudicca roleplay to last for a lifetime at the Regent's Chantry. D did you know she loves talking about how unshaven her vagina is? I mean, good lord! Of course. You're lucky I happen to have this Galenia flying around, or you'd be shit hot of luck. Good. Give. Thank you. Oh, also, I forgot. Um, your pack is dead. I, I told you that, right? Yep. How are you feeling about that? I mean, Coulomb's making me want to stab you 40 times, but it also feels like I've dumped my way out of a psycho polycule. So I'm feeling like hitting the town and injecting some crack. Very sexy, Kevin. You know... They were all bastards. But I liked those bastards. Almost as much as I hated those bastards. Would you like to take a moment? No, I'd really like to not dwell on it at all, in fact. Makes me almost glad to see Officer Bumfuck here. Uh, Chapman. No! And what of your, uh, sister? Uh, I'll... look into it. Very good. Right, so, I've got a question. I thought you were Kevin. <laughs> no, I am Big D. So you were just lying? Well, uh, yeah. 
Oh, wow. Damn. What else did you lie about? What? Uh, well, the people we found were actually vampires. Uh, we actually took them hostage, and we actually planted those mines. We owned them, and I fell out of the window on purpose because I was here. Hello, I am hostage number four. Blimey. That kind of sucks. <sighs> I'm a terrible detective. Oh, come on, you did just fine. Besides, you're a degenerate ghoul whose brain is polluted with vampire sludge. Of course you couldn't best my indomitable intellect. You calling someone a degenerate is very... Pray your next words carefully. Okay, consider this. Fuck you. Honestly, I mostly thought it odd how you turned from the small, bleak British man on your license into a giant Middle Eastern meat slab. It read like an online ad and it distracted me from the whole interview. Yeah, just insult your new master. That's a surefire way to get yourself not eaten. Oh, I'm sure we will get along just fine. Now, <laughs> let us go ride the miniature steam locomotive. All right, but I need to be heading home to the kids soon, so maybe we should do the ghouling thing first. Yeah, well, I need to get home to my horse, and you don't see me stressing out about it. I want to ride the funny little train. But blood. We can drink blood on the train. Come on, let us go. Oh, well, bring me crazy store. Uh, wait, did you even check if it was open? We will commandeer it. Come on, let's go. Go, 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 go. Are we even? Shut up. Go, 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 go! Storm them! Charge! Go, go! You have listened to an audio drama by Ogre Popinang, with voice work by Speaker D as Big D, Stellar Elite as Detective Sergeant Guy Chapman, and Arendil as Kevin. Artwork by Rude Rubicante, Offhawker, and Eliphas. Soundtrack by Macker. Sound composition by Alpha Booza. Mixing by Stringstorm. Video composition by Alpha Booza. With lead writers Speaker D and Alpha Booza. Special thanks to Blessed for not working on this script. Portions of the materials are the copyrights and trademarks of Paradox Interactive AB and are used with permission. All rights reserved. For more information, please visit worldofdarkness.com. Visit patreon.com slash alphabooza for updates every other week. Thank you for listening and good evening. <laughs> now, that you, boy, you were running away from your scary kid grandmother! Yeah! <laughs> they were running, alright, and she was, she, she was running after them with her big, big fucking knife, boy! Yeah, she was running after them with her knife and... Yeah, they, they ran into a forest and they fell off a cliff, you see. And behind them, as they looked up, they saw Grandmother. She dropped her knife and she picked her up a crossbow, baby. Her big freaking fair crossbow. And she ran down and she killed one of her brothers. Now there was only one left, and he was cornered.